last video super thanks goes out to Christopher Jumps 3586 thanks for the super thanks then we have at Donkey Kong King appreciate uh, supporting the last video brother and the awesome comment then we have at pit bull rc ltd 6252 thank you for the awesome donation for the last video i truly appreciate it then we have at courts courty 73 appreciate you supporting several videos really means a lot then we have at jeremy stewart 1785 appreciate you supporting the last video means a lot brother then we have at tim custom rc supporting a lot of videos i definitely appreciate it those who can support and do support i do appreciate it we have at michael van kurt definitely love you supporting each and every video anybody that does support and can support i truly do appreciate it now let's get on to the video thanks everyone all right welcome back so today we have the promoto mx back on the bench um update on what's going on with this is that um we will be switching out the esc and we will be going from a 3s to a 4s pack as you see here's the 3s pack that I run and there's the 4S pack. You can see the size difference. These Electron Pros are pretty darn small and this fits in there along with the 2S pack that I normally run. But I believe I can modify the box and get this 4S pack to fit in there. I have ordered um, the ESC already. Uh, it'll be in Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, with all that said, these are all the spare parts I have so far that has come in for the Promoto MX. I haven't damaged any parts. Here's the zip tie mod for the servo saver that we've done. Some people said, why don't you run a Max 10? Here's the Max 10 that I originally bought for this. And the Max 10, which I showed, here's the Max 10 Easy Run brand new unit. That's what I originally was going to stick in here. Here's what we what fits in there. And as you see, a Max 10 is just too big. Um, I tried to squeeze this thing in here, but with this sensor wire, uh, it really gets in the way. So. Maybe an older Max 10 might have worked. I, I don't know. But I know if I force this in here, I'm sure I can get it to go in. And I liked it because it had the plugs right in here rather than me having to modify it. Here's the original one. I did take off the fan because I used the fan uh, for the programming cable that sticks out, which I'll be doing again. I'll still use that same one. But here is the original one, and you can see it was pretty darn close. Other than this cable getting in the way, I think it would have been pretty feasible to get this in there. So I wish I could have used the Max 10, but I can't. It's just a little too big. So we put that off to the side. And I went with the factory spectrum unit, which is fine because we're only trying to get to 100 miles an hour. I'm not trying to go any faster than that uh, with the motorcycle. So we do have an easy run Max 10 kit, which doesn't work. Um, here's the gear, the 23 tooth that I went 70 mile an hour on. Robinson Racing. There's your part number. I think the staple's in the way for the part number. It's a 1723. 1723. That's the part number. 
Robinson Racing Gear does 70 miles an hour with the 100 amp ESC, which is this 2S, 3S Vendetta ESC. With this gear, does 70 miles an hour. So you can run 2S or 3S. And that's how I got to 70. Here's our extra gyro. Um, some have said that yours seems real noisy compared to mine, blah, blah, blah. I, I've bashed this thing. I've jumped it. I've taken it apart. We've checked the gyro. I noticed the gyro starting to get a little noisy. Once I took it apart and inspected it, all the bearings were good. Everything was good. I put it back together and it's back to being the normal noise it normally makes. Other than me running it at 8 volts versus the 7.4. What happens is um, your 7.4 battery pack will run a little over 8 volts and then start to fall off as the battery dies. Um, with the external BEC, it never falls off. So this motor spins at 8 volts all the time. So, but it's not getting hot. It's not having an issue. So I don't know what to say. Here's the three gear set that's on the side of that because I figured it would eventually strip out. There's four gears in there. There's these three gears and then there's the pinion. So three gear set plus the factory pinion is four gears just on the one side. Then you have the front sprocket and the rear sprocket. So six gears. This thing is geared six different ways before it drives that tire. So that's why I'm doing all this experimenting and I know gearing up slowed down, went to a 25 tooth and the RC slowed down from 70 to 68. Put on the small tire because we did that on a factory tire, which is right here. And the street tire also went 68. That's telling me this tire was two mile an hour slower during all our testing so I always ran the factory tire. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to leave these tires on for now because I know the bigger tire um, goes two mile an hour faster. So I'm going to do some testing on this. This tire is about done. It's really soft. Um, it does a lot of stretching, but it handles better with this tire. And then if we're close to 100 miles an hour, I can throw the factory tire back on. But here's the three gear set. I do have it in case I strip it. Have some extra parts. This is the control arm and haul, uh, hardware crash structure. So this is the whole front structure that normally breaks on a front impact. In case I hit a curb, I do have one of those in stock as well. Have a front brake servo. Have a uniform for the guy. I have a factory front wheel, an extra chain. As soon as we break that chain or stretch it too far, I also have the triple triple clamp set for the front handlebars. In case I hit a curb or crash, if any of these parts break, I just want to have backup factory parts. I do have another front brake caliper as well. Like I said, I do have a backup. A servo saver and this is how I do it I zip tie it to take all the slop out of this thing so we have one of those do have another plug and then this this is something that just uh, just received this is what we're gonna be working on today here is the part number LOS 261003 20 bucks. This is the seat battery box set since I'm going to be mod modifying the battery box It's easier to, to modify a different one This is what you get in it So there is no That's funny, there's no clip, but there is a tether. 
but here's the battery door and you can see how the seat top half of the seat and this strip down and because this is like this I feel I can space this away from this and get the pack in here so the plan was this is going to be like this Let's lose this battery door for now So you can see how far we're off from this. So let me take a look at this real quick and see if there's something I can do. I might just run zip ties across and leave the battery in there. Be right back. All right, so here is the lid that's tinged on this and it's got this bar in between. So I'm going to dremel this bar out to give me more room. It does step down here for the door. I'm going to end up spacing, I think, this up. Um, because I need, I think, these two holes. Well, that hole is going to hold the front part of the seat. That's going to hold the back part of the seat. Oh, I need the shock. The shock goes right here. So I do need that. And I think I'm going to need this pin right here as well. So I think I'm going to end up spacing this up. But it would be pretty easy to 3D print a longer door this bottom half to print that longer and accept a 4s pack so this would be all the same dimensions the sides where it attaches would just have to be about double what it is now and that would lower the shock down a little bit which is fine we just soften up the spring rate because I have the shock man maxed out I know the mud flap goes right in here. I forgot what this back pin was for. Oh, that's just for the door. That's for the battery door shock battery door so I'm gonna start taking this apart I have another battery tray that I'm gonna mod the 4s pack I might not even put a door on this and run it like that I think that's gonna be my best bet but we're gonna do some modification and then I could just leave this in here because It'll look factory. It'll operate factory, which is the best case scenario for this bike. I'm gonna start getting the guy off. We're gonna get some of this stuff off. And yeah, so those two holes are just for the plastics. There is nothing really supporting in the back, um, but I do need the shock mount, which is on this half here. modifications I do I just don't want them to be noticeable 
definitely want it to be stock. Pull off the zip tie. My guy's starting to learn to lean over now. He's starting to get some memory. But figured I'd make a video showing what I'm working on. Let you guys know that uh, the ESC will be here on Tuesday. Wednesday the latest is what they told me. And we'll go from there. Meanwhile... getting the plastics and everything broke down so I can get the ESC back off. Yes, I have the gun set up on the softest setting just so I'm not stripping screws. And then we'll have to take this cover off, get these side things off. But I think the biggest thing is getting the seat off. Yes, those have to come off. So that's longer. Let's see if this is the same. the shortest and then a medium screw yep and then this should come off allow us to get to our shock So there's the battery tray. It's funny, the other metal piece is not there. Which should be, should be on that side. See the door goes in between there to support those plates. We don't need to take these off. Those are the medium screws. These are the 
Columbia screws, but I got to put the brass in there. Shortest screw. I still got to shave that off. That's what those, so if I lose one of those shims, I'll be able to make that door solid. See what I'm getting at? See, that's that's where the top of the seat would normally sit for the post. But I think we'll be okay.
I will have to think about that. But you can see what I'm faced with. We'll be going with some sort of concept like that to put a 4S pack in there. Um, just want to show you step by step how I'm going to do this modification. So when we get out and run, you guys understand what's going on. But there we go. Like, comment, subscribe. Catch you guys on the next video. Stay tuned. Full trigger. So we're going to hit stop, read, 42 miles an hour. All right, I'm going to get it turned around. And here we go. Stop, read, 62 miles an hour. Here we go. Ah! Stop, read, 61 miles an hour, battery's going down. Here we go. Full trigger. Stop, read, 44 miles an hour. Read. Yep, 44 miles an hour again. Let's see. Stop. Read. 63 miles an hour. Stop, read, yep, 63. So 63 on 3S with the taller tire. Full trigger. Stop, read, 46 miles an hour, no rider. Oh, it had a gyro speed wobble. Ah! Yep, death wobble. Read at 63 miles an hour. So we're going to hit stop, read, 70 miles an hour. <laughs> 